Well, during the second reading of this important bill, the Environment Canterbury Temporary Commissioners and Improved Water Management Bill. Uh, and to start off, uh, Mr Speaker, I would like to take the House through an event that happened uh, about within the last month, and that was uh, when the Kaikoura and the Huranui uh, councils sat down with the, the Minister of, of Local Government and the Minister of Environment. And it was very interesting to uh, just take take in the, the flavour that came out of those meetings with those councils. Uh, I heard the member on the other side, the opposition member on the other side before, saying that the mayors never discussed uh, with their colleagues, the fellow councillors, uh, their, their response to the, uh, the, the Minister of Local Government. Well, I can testify that that was uh, not the case. In actual fact, there was a good canvassing uh, of the views of the councillors, and I'd have to say that in the Huranui and the Kaikoura district councils to a person. Everyone wanted something done uh, that was quick and, and final. Uh, they did not see a future uh, in the environment Canterbury because they were mucking around and wasting opportunity. And, and I just refer to when we talk about opportunity, in the late 80s, uh, Mr Speaker, there was the uh, Huranui uh, irrigation scheme and it transformed a desolate uh, wasteland that would be blown away by the Norwest into an oasis. Uh, the amount of gain that was around duck shooting, things like that, was just unbelievable and the win-win situation was outstanding. So you know, that was what the other 42,000 hectares has been hoping for, Mr Speaker, for the last 20 years. Nothing has happened. So when we get to the second reading of this very important bill, uh, it's, an, it's good to see that we have enshrined in it the vision and the principles of the Canterbury Water Management Strategy. And that is very, very important. And I just want to touch on a couple of the important aspects because what we're hearing from the other side of the House and very poorly represented by the Greens is that they are suggesting that the environmental standards are going to go out the window. Well, I just want to draw the House's attention to the primary principles of that water management strategy, regional approach. And it says the planning of the natural water use is guided by the following. First, order priorities, considerations, the environment, customary uses, community supplies and stock water. Second, order priority considerations, irrigation, renewable electricity generation, recreation, tourism and other amenities. But the point I want to make here, Mr Speaker, is that there is a high priority put on the environment and with the Canterbury Water Strategy uh, Management Strategy, that had to be number one. Uh, the thing that this side of the House and the Government was very concerned that that strategy was very, very fragile. And I make the point again, Mr Speaker, that if one person had not felt that they'd got adequate uh, provision consideration within that strategy and pulled out, it was all lost. It would be all lost. So that point is, as I made in the first reading speech, it takes 90% of the effort to get the last 10%. This government did not come into power to sit down here purely to get its pay, like we saw the Labor government over the last nine years. So, Mr Speaker, it is with great pride and passion that I live with a vision that potentially one day we will have 42,000 hectares of that beautiful country in the Hiranui irrigated, and thank goodness it will come from our national government. I call the Honourable Clayton Cosgrove.